the social media platform gives me an opportunity to let the public really get to know who I am. You know, most people in the community don't know who I am. They know a name. They may not know my face, yeah. but they know a name. They, oh, that guy, yeah, there's some Petrucci guy. He's the judge in Newtown. Welcome to the Lion's Den, hosted by Lance Bachman. Hey, everybody, welcome to the den today. I have your honor, Mick Petrucci, one of my favorite judges, probably the only judge I like. I'm just joking. There's some other ones out there. And we also have <laughs> retired governor, Mark Schweiker, here with us. Thank you guys for both being on the show today. We're going to discuss, Mick, you're running for re-election. Yes. Which is pretty cool. Um, we're going to talk about how elections have changed since you ran for governor. I mean, I think you started out actually as a Middletown supervisor. If yeah, I right here in Bucks right. County. Yeah, so and you grew all the way to be our governor. Thank you for your service. Uh, you. Talk about how election change, how you advertise change, how the world's change, and some of the issues that's going on around. So thank you for being on the show. Mick, why don't you sure. introduce yourself first? Sure, absolutely. Your Honor, uh, I saw you. <laughs> no, I went no. to high school with him, so I apologize. <laughs> Your Honor, I, I apologize. And Lance, I appreciate that, but I, I am still Mick at the end of the day. And uh, so, yeah, so my name is Mick Petrucci. Uh, my legal name is Michael Petrucci, but everybody knows me as Mick. And I am the district judge out of the Newtown District Court, and I do encompass my jurisdiction is the borough of Newtown, the township of Newtown, Wrightstown, and Upper Makefield. And I've been proud to have been elected at, for my first term back in 2015. I took the bench 2016, celebrating my five-year anniversary now. And uh, I, I, it's a six-year term, so I'm back at it again, and I'm running for re-election. And hopefully I can serve the uh, people of Bucks County and my jurisdiction to the best of my ability for the next six years. Congratulations. I wish you nothing but success. Thank you. Governor? Sure. I, I don't think you need any Well, Lance, I'm, but... I'm, listen, I'm, I'm kind of the sidekick today, man. Uh, <laughs> That's a good I, sidekick. I, I do not a bad see, one. Not a bad one. <laughs> I want to see Mick continue in, in public service. I think mo by most accounts, it's it's been a great run. You know, the, 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 the lawbreakers face accountability in his courtroom. And at the same time, he's all, he is all, also Mick, the guy, the neighbor, the resident who's out there helping in a, in a civic-minded way as well. So uh, I'm kind of the sidekick here and motivated to help Mick uh, have the opportunity to, to enjoy another term. So let's just jump right into it. Mm -hmm. I've known you. You owned your own business. It was successful. I think you actually started when we were in high school, correct? Didn't I you? did. It was an ice cream shop, right? Uh, or was it water ice? No, ice cream ice right cream. here in Bristol correct. Borough. And you sold it? Uh, m many years later, yes. <laughs> What the hell would ever make? I know you want to become a constable, so I <laughs> right. mean, like, what would make you want to be a judge? I mean, you're a business per. I mean, I find it hard to believe I would leave this to go. Right. I mean, can you kind of tell us? <laughs> totally the different here? walk of life. It is. You know, so I, I I have the entrepreneur blood running through my veins, and you're right. When I was 17 years old at the, in Council Rock High School, I had the opportunity to uh, purchase a an ice cream store right here in Bristol Borough that was owned by my aunt and uncle due to some serious health issues of my uncle uh, is why I had that opportunity. I just fell in love with the business. I loved working with the public, the people, uh, you know, just, you know, owning my own destiny felt really good. And as I graduated and moved on to, you know, take classes at Bucks County Community College, it just at the time wasn't my thing. You know, I, I wanted to grow and expand and we started franchising and next thing you know, I'm in my early 20s and I had 65 ice cream and Italian ice stores all over the country. We were in 13 states and, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I kind of took on some partners over the years to expand and grow and the partnership thing did not work out for me. That's why we ended up selling ultimately, uh, which led me into another career path. Um, you know, it's I, I, I've done it all. I've been involved in construction. Uh, that was not my thing, but I did learn a lot. I'm very handy at home. And then I got into law enforcement and I, I got involved in politics uh, in Newtown, where, where I live. And I became the elected Pennsylvania State Constable and I, you know, working for the, all the district courts in Bucks County. I was very active, working 80 plus hours a week. And Unfortunately, the judge that was in Newtown at the time, the sitting judge, passed away, Judge Nashorn. That's not Don and Nashorn. Don correct. Nashorn, 61 years old, you know, just uh, unfortunate, you know, situation. And I, I always wanted to be a 
a judge, you know, because I saw what Judge Nashorn did for the community. I saw what some of these other Bucks County judges were doing for people in their court, helping people, trying to steer, you know, people in the right direction so they don't make mistakes again. And I just fell in love with helping people. And, you know, being a Bucks County native uh, my entire life, you know, I, I just, I'm very passionate about helping people. Uh, especially the youth, you know, I, I believe you can take somebody, you know, who has maybe made a bad decision, just call a spade a spade, a dumb decision, they did something stupid, but maybe it's their first time, you know, it's their, it's a nonviolent offense, and they deserve a second chance, and, and I'm that guy who can make that happen, so their records are not blemished, as they get older, maybe try to get into college and or, or a, a career that maybe is a licensed career from a state. And unfortunately, because of a blemish on the record, they can't get that job. So we, we kind of, you know, have done a diversion program of sorts, you know, to help people to get that second chance. So C- kind of like the, uh, I, and I, that boils down to what I think is judgment and the sense of fairness, which I think residents in Newtown or Upper Make or Rice Town want. Sure. I mean, we all know that as Bucks County guys that, you know, we, we give weight to that. We, we prefer that. Sure. And I think I think most observers and folks who have been in the courtroom, police department, attorneys, regular residents kind of see that in him. So, you know, to my way of thinking, you know, he's not just an accomplished jurist who runs an efficient courtroom. He does those things, plus people sense that he's trying to be fair. A good judge, which is what you want, right? It's good really judgment. the common sense approach. Well, it is. And, but I think the biggest thing with you, Mick, it, Your Honor, I'm sorry, is you're in the community. You're out there. Right. You're talking to people. You're constantly around. I walk into La Style, You'll be sitting there eating and talking. <laughs> no, you're, sure. and you're like, hey, like... You're not. I've like, seen you there a few times. <laughs> but you're not like some judges that right. have such a bad reputation. I'm not being rude that they sure. can't come out in their own backyard. Right. And the only time they do, they're kind of bullish, you know. And you're just a nice person. Well, thank you. I do appreciate that. But I think and everyone feels that way in Upper Mayfield. I don't think people are too many people. People are gonna say a bad word about you. Sure, and because you know, I do have my my you know pulse on the community. You know, I do believe that to be true. You know, listen, most people are not going to tell you how they feel to your face. You know, they'll tell a friend and then it'll, it'll you know, that trickle down effect. I, I haven't heard that because I treat everyone with respect. Everyone gets treated equal. Everyone it gets treated fairly. And to be honest with you, you can throw in my chambers, my whole back walls, nothing but legal books and and you know title you know this and title that subchapter that i mean i mean it i have a law library you can throw all that in the trash you know the law is the law that's the easy part the hard part about my job is the actual procedure and again it's it's common sense approach you know i don't care what your charge is everyone gets treated equally everyone gets treated fair you know, it's it's um, the court, especially the district court at, at my level court. It really was designed to be the people's court, the court of the community. Let's jump in that. So I had Casey do some research for me. Thank you, Casey. I appreciate it. Four years, 5,000 cases you've, you've had gone through now. Over uh, 5,000, correct? Well, it's 20,000 docketed cases, but 5,000 of those have actually been Tried. hearing. Exactly. Tried. People yeah. in person. Yeah. So that's what I want to talk about. Sure. You see 5,000. Mm-hmm. What's the biggest problems that are going on in Newtown? Because I, I, I'm not being rude. When people sure. say I went to Council Rock, everyone thinks I grew up rich, which you know is not true. It was spoiled. I don't have to tell you all the things sure. that come with the Council Rock, Newtown. Right. What's the problem? Yeah, <laughs> I was actually shocked to see five thousand cases. Be sure th- that I was. I was like, "Wow, what's going on up in here?" So right. he runs a good courtroom. <laughs> they, 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 so can you tell us what the main issues are? Because anyone that's going to run against you, mm-hmm. they're going to want to talk about the issues. What's the main issues that you're seeing? I'm assuming drugs is one with kids. Uh, yeah. So unfortunately, you're you're right. You know, with the younger population, it is without a doubt. It's you know, and when, when we say drugs, it's it's small amount of marijuana. And, and it's underage drinking. That okay. still is a problem. And, you know, I'm very proud locally through through the Council Rock School District. I, I work and support the Council Rock Coalition of Healthy Youth. And it's all about educating our our young population. You know, it's, it's you know, basically, listen, here's the bottom line. Don't do it. It's illegal. But 
if you do make that bad decision and you do get caught, you're getting charged and you're coming in front of me. So I do see a lot of cases like that. Now, are you putting them in alternative programs? Yes. So they don't get crushed with records for us. Yeah. That's exactly okay. what it is. We have curious. a diversion program. Uh, so, so back in 2015, I made a campaign promise, and I don't mean to sound like a commercial here, but I, I made a promise and I kept that promise. And what I really am, am most proud of is I restarted the youth aid panel, which went dormant for years in the in the Council Rock school district area. And basically, it's a diversion program where if you make a mistake, first time, nonviolent, you you will go sit in front of a panel of community volunteers from all different walks of life, and it really is a second chance. So you don't get a record. Good. You do go through a learning, you know, there's an education component of it, you know, about drug or alcohol or maybe retail theft, whatever your charge is. And then you're given back to the community with community service. Um, we do make the, the younger crowd uh, write an essay, what you learned, why you'll never be in front of, not just this judge, but any judge ever again. And I hold, I hold them accountable for it. And then obviously, you know, we continue it for 60, 90, 120 days, and they can't have any other police record. And at the end, if they comply with everything, satisfaction, um, you know, uh, with with their their case, usually what happens it gets withdrawn or dismissed. So so there is no record. You know, so that's what we do for for the young generation. You know, when when you get into the adults, um, the biggest thing that I see. Well, first of all, the, the the number one docketed case in my court is traffic traffic violations by far. You know, in, in the Newtown area, we, we have, um, you know, the Newtown Bypass. Some people think it's their own personal racetrack because it is a, a, a there's portions of it that are just a straight road. <laughs> I never thought about that, but I, I could see that. Yeah. I'm assuming younger adults. All the above. Really? It's, it's yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, okay. you know, usually, you know, you do get the, um, you know, I just got my license and I'm going to see what this car is all, all about. You know, so they do open it up a little bit, but what really, really gets me is in, in the communities, in the neighborhoods, you know, when you have a 25 mile per hour or 15 mile per hour speed zone and people double that like it's nothing, you know, and they are facing an automatic suspension of their license, a PennDOT departmental hearing, insurance rates going through the roof, you know, that that's what I'm seeing the bulk of. But on the criminal side of it, uh, probably, well, not probably, without a doubt, because we're in the Newtown area and we do have a lot of great restaurants, eateries, bars, it's, it's easy, alcohol is easily accessible in our area. Don't tell me DUIs is still big. DUI is still a big thing. And especially with Uber and Lyft, honestly, I, I don't get it. I get it, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I know like, that being rude. You drink and drive in this day and age. Or, I, sure, it costs you fifteen bucks, twenty bucks. I mean, right. You, but if you get if you get nabbed with a DUI, it could cost just like the billboards nine ninety five say it could cost you up to ten grand. It's not even that. It costs you a job. <laughs> right. Why do you kill somebody? Well, and that's what it's all about for me. It's all about safety, and that's what I try to preach in my court, even for speeding tickets. To me. I know you know the law. You just made a bad decision. Let's learn from this and move on. And and that's my whole message. It's all about safety. Anything and everything revolves around that. Megan, I like, and you know, I did say that we talked about kids and, and supporting them and making sure they've got a decent future and not, you know, hurt by a, a criminal record, right? I think relative to the adults and families in Newtown, I mean, he, he really pays attention to the whole identity theft prevention realm which is you, know, you talk about uh, epidemic and really grabbing a lot of people in a financial sense you know, young you know f young people with new credit cards to families and he's on top of that and in, in my mind it's 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 the outlook and the sensitivity of a judge who's tuned into what regular folks and families face every day Governor I'm going to ask you a question right this is a marketing show and elections let's be realistic yeah. You guys spend money on advertising. 
When you ran for supervisor in Middletown, I think it was 1979 you won. Yeah. I think I was yeah. five years old. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. So I, I was doing the math when I saw He had to get won. that in. I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hold on. How are you advertising and getting your election yeah, won it's, today compared to now? How, pretty, how's it changed? Pretty how's simple. It? I mean, I had a piece of literature that had a little biographical stuff. I was concerned about traffic flow and stuff like that, but but door knocking, man, is is your is your positioning effort, your outreach effort, with a little bit of literature. I mean, we didn't have any money. I know, I, you know, we didn't have any money in that campaign <laughs> treasury. We could pay for literature, and then I had to door knock. You got to door knock your butt off, man. And sure. and so, what's changed today? Oh well, this well, how about it? I mean, as we sit in this <laughs> conversation right now on a podcast, this is a concrete example and difference of what you couldn't do in 1985 to what you can do in 2021 right here the fact that you know a, a motivated uh enterprising guy like yourself who wants to you know offer the podcast opportunity bring in a an earnest judge like mick petrucci and talk it over and then you know it goes out to to thousands is an example that wasn't available then so you, you had to door knock your your butt off to be competitive and ultimately to win yeah i mean it's definitely changing and that's why i brought it up your honor it's you know i'm assuming your door knocking compared to your door i'm sure you do door knock but i'm assuming your door knocking was 10 times more than you because you i see you over facebook right you're 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 constantly posting you do a lot for i think people that follow you see you do more for the community than most people ever do sure and I don't know if that's you have to do that being part of a judge, but I don't see how the judge is doing it. Right. So it's just it's, it's kind of. I'm just curious. Do you do you know what people are looking like from the outside viewing you, or are you kind of just like this is who I am, and I'm helping school kids. I'm willing to judge things. I'm just having fun being a judge. It. That's exactly the answer. I, I'm number one. I'm having fun. To me, this is not a job. This is a lifestyle. I love what I do. I, I legitimately feel every day that when I go to my office when I when I go to that district court in Newtown I'm not going to work I'm going there to do what I love to help I help people and as far as you know my presence on social media I, I'm me I, I put it all out there I don't play games with people I don't do the whole you know backdoor room deal making that's not me I tell you exactly like it is whether you like it or you don't you know and and listen not everybody loves me because of that because some sometimes people can't handle you know the truth or at least my opinion of it but uh you know on the social media world that's to me because i can't i'm 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 kind of restricted as a judge to do certain things and you know the social media platform gives me an opportunity to let the public really get to know who i am you know, most people in the community don't know who I am. They know a name. They may not know my face, yeah. but they know a name. They oh, that guy. Yeah, there's some Petrucci guy. He's the judge in Newtown because they do see my name. You know, everywhere. I mean, twenty thousand docketed cases. That's a lot of mail getting sent to a lot of people's homes uh, over the years. And then you know, and, and and I've been involved in you know several high profile cases as well you know, where my name has been plastered all over the newspapers or whatever. And, you know, for me, that's why the community service is so important, because that's who I am. Nothing has changed, you know, when I became judge, other than maybe a few titles. Yeah. You know, I'm not the president of this anymore, the chairman of that anymore, but I'm still involved in the local community, because one of the things that I can't do is I am prohibited for, you know, raising money. You know, so I can't stand in front of the McCaffrey's in Newtown when the Newtown Rotary Club, uh, you know, does their food drive because that's actually somebody giving me a box of cereals, consider them giving me money. But I can show up at the end of the event, load my SUV, take it to the food pantry. That I can do. So so certain certain things have yeah. shifted. Here's and, a question. And, for and in, in this particular year, too, this is a year that he can, it, it, it's in bounds and, and judicially permissible for him to be door knocking, to, to right. engage people in a public way, to get to know his nature. In the other years, he cannot do that just right. because of the strictures that come with judicial life as a district justice. And unfortunately, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so the door knocking may not happen. <laughs> Governor, I got a question for you. Sure. 
Whether you're a Republican or Democrat, I don't yeah. care. I didn't even look. I didn't want sure. Casey to tell me because I just, I don't want to. You know how I feel, sure. Your Honor. Sure. I just if you're a good person, you're a good person. If you're a bad person, you're a bad person. Sure. Which I think both of them have a lot of it. How has the internet, especially in the last two years, changed how politicians behave, talk? I mean, what's your take? Cause yeah. You're an old school governor. You're, I yeah. think you were governor in 1992. Well, I think I graduated high school then. Well, right no, I, I finished in 2003. Uh, Correct. So, so it, it, it kind of, oh, yeah, absolutely. Even, even, I mean, the internet came alive in a commercial sense in 1993, but you think about it, and I dealt with the crash of United Flight 93 in Western Pennsylvania on, mm-hmm. on 9 11, which was 2001. And so, as we talk about the chapters of electronic delivery and electronic competition, digital, the digital world, uh, you know, the blogs really only took off after 9 11, which is around 1, 2, and 3. Right, mm-hmm. and I, I dealt with the twenty-four and seven news cycle. Um, so to answer your question about how it's changed, um, and I think President Biden aptly nailed it during the inaugural in his remarks when he said, "Man, not every issue has to turn into a, a raging fire." <laughs> and in my mind, it's it's a roundabout way to answer the question this way. Yeah, we have a dispute. We don't see uh, an issue the same way. It doesn't have to turn into a, 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 you know, a blood fight. So, but it has. And I think to some extent, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, you hit enter and out go these wild comments or you're on Twitter and it, it becomes a race to the rhetorical bottom. Who gets noticed? You know, the, the most intense comment, the most intense commentator, you know, not, not the centrist, the balanced observation stuff, it's kind of a race to the bottom. So that's, that's A. Here's the B on the A and the B. I think the B is, I think there's a lot of office holders, and that's why I like Mick's approach, that are good with what I call the mentality of winning 50% plus one. If I barely win, I'm cool with it. Uh, let's split the electorate. You know, my dad used to say, man, I don't, well, politics by subtraction. I don't get it. I thought it was politics by addition, adding supporters, consensus building and i think that's dynamically on a sentimental level the biggest difference man that people are cool with winning with 50 percent plus one and then they govern that way and that creates this division this gap this intensity and the whole thing that that the new president brought up about let's let's knock this stuff off of everything becoming a raging fire you know and you know, anyone that knows me, I, I have no problem saying I want to see Biden being successful. I'm not a Biden, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah guy. But I thought he said something that was interesting when he spoke to everyone on Zoom. And most people didn't pick up when he actually opened up his remarks and he said, if you talk down to people, you talk rude to people, you insult someone, I'm going to fire you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, we're not going through a, through a whole sure. big investigation. I'm going to fire you. I'm sitting here looking at you. I'm assuming you're probably 60, 65 years old. Yeah. Right? yeah. You're polished. You still speak well. Could you ever see yourself talking the way these people talk to each other today, these politicians? Because now you see everyday people talking to each other. Your Honor, I'm sure you see it. We see it. I mean, you're my age. It's crazy how people communicate anymore. It's actually sure. disgusting. All right. Sure, and, and it's, it, it is the, the caustic, uh, full of animosity response stuff. And, you know, aside from private life, I mean, you know, public life and public leadership is about... Uh, you know, consensus building, which requires, I think, you know, a, a sense of moderation and 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 proper style and and you know, hearing out others. And I do think that the last four years, uh, and look, I, I don't think I'm off the mark to say that the you know, the the former president was into the knockdown drag him out stuff in, in a rhetorical and commentary sense. And I think it, it coarsened debate. Didn't didn't enlighten debate. So um, anyway, it, it, it's unfortunate to see. So you know how I kind of handle this is you know I'm not at the national scene. I don't feel like even though I, you know I'm a I was a Rep- I'm a Republican. Uh, I, I won in Democratic areas all the time, uh, and I say that to make the point that w- we've got to be mindful of working together. And I think that that uh, certainly in the public sphere. You know, that attitude's important. And, you know, you, you, I think you're spot on on this day, just days after the new president and the White House, this administration has begun. We all want them to enjoy some momentum and to, and to succeed. I mean, it's, he's now our president. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not a partisan observation. So let's you know be supportive. And I mean, we got some major battles. Think about it. I mean, Mick Mick's got to be careful about where he spends his time and wear the mask and door knocking because. You know the pandemic's still out there so you know that's right. obviously the president's number one pursuit but you make a, you you raise the right question about how getting along and and not and reducing the the the, the pitch and the animosity and what, what i find interesting your honor is this mm -hmm. is i've known you now for years mm -hmm. i never knew da's and judges and this is just me being uneducated ran under a democratic or republican uh ticket sure and We've talked about it. Like, you are running on the Republican, but you're more down the middle. You're like me, kind of. You're like, yo, if you're just a good person, you're a good person. I really don't care. You don't let politics come into your, like, at all. Can you kind of right. explain that? Because it's hard. Like, I don't know. I, I, I met guys like you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't use the word guys. But I met people like you, Your Honor, that literally don't have any of that part. It's like, oh, well, you know what? Like you said, you're trying to also capture the people that don't vote for you. You're trying to treat them fair. Right. Can you kind of explain why you're not a Democrat or Republican, but you have to run another ticket? So, I don't think most people know you have to. Right. So now the thing with, with a district judge, we actually are able to cross-file. So I will be on the Republican and the Democrat ballot. So, But in the state of Pennsylvania... And, and again, this is not my call. I don't, I, don't, I'm, I don't make this stuff up. But an independent voter... If you're a registered independent voter for the primary, you cannot vote in the primary. Yeah. So, but because I'm a judge and I'm supposed to be, which I am, neutral, undetached, you know, nonpartisan, I will cross file and I will be on both sides of the ballot. And just like I say, I go to the, re well, now <laughs> that I'm allowed to be, because it's my campaign, it's my election year, I'm allowed to go to the Republican, you know, uh, committee yes. events, meetings, also the Democrat. And when I, when I talk to people, I kind of say the same thing to both sides. Don't label me as a Republican or because I'm a registered Republican voter which I've been since 18 years old, 30 years later, I'm still registered as a Republican. However, I vote for the person, not the party. And if I knew, if I could be an independent, a registered independent, because that's who I am, truly an independent, I would. But then I couldn't vote yeah, for no myself yeah, in, no in the primary. So it's it's basically, you know, being, you know, non-political and the fact that I will cross file don't label me as a Republican or, or you know, he's on the Democrat ticket. He's, I'll, ne I'll never vote for him. Don't label me. Label me as Mick. I'm just Mick. I'm the same guy from high school, Council Rock, that I am today. You know, I just have more life experiences under my belt, you know, because I've been there, done that. I, I'm, I'm the guy who's actually walked the walk and talked the talk. I've been there, done that. And, you know, it, nothing's changed, you know, so all, all I just ask people to do is don't label me. And in the public sense, so to speak, it's politics. Uh, it, it's people first uh, and people over politics. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I just thought it was interesting. I found out probably four or five years ago that you have these positions like your sure. Bucks County controller runs as a Republican Democrat. Like, right. Yeah. I'm like, why? I, I I'm not clearly. I shouldn't be sure. in politics. I'm questioning the dumbest sure. things, but I mean, it makes no sense to me. Sure. But you know, do you think, Governor, that you're going to see the country come back together, or do you think? Because it seems like it's I, very I, divided. I, I, if you're a Democrat, Republicans seem to hate you. Republicans seem to hate, like there's no in between. Like one of my best friends, Michael Sales, a Democrat, he's a big Democrat. And yeah. I don't think twice about hanging out with him, and I'm like, all right, right. you're my well, friend. That, it, it ought to be right. that way. I mean, the you know, you you, you don't. Uh, terminate relationships because of party registration people however. are but there is a there is a there is a, a, a gap no a gap in outlook a, a gap in 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 preference as far as public policy choices but i kind of see it this way and i've been through my fair share of elections i was you know i had six of them uh, i'm happy to say i was six and oh uh, <laughs> yet don't defeat it yeah it, it's this that uh you know we're we're the, the presidential kind of elevates everything in an intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it subsides after that. So I think naturally so, it will subside. Uh, yet, I mean, to, some, to a great extent, I think a President Biden's obligation, aside from technical and, and, and policy challenges, 
is to, on a, on a spiritual level, talk about the need for we're stronger when we're together. I know it sounds, you know, Boy Scoutish, but that's what a president is expected to accent. Uh, and really, I mean, no doubt he's following someone who's comfortable with, with you know, in, intense rhetoric. So I think, I think naturally it will subside. And then I think with, you know, the, think about it, we've had a weird, tough 11 months going back to, to the winter of 2020 with the pandemic and people just aren't literally together to solve these things. I think it, for a, a lot of natural societal reasons, it's, it's going to calm itself. Let's talk about this, you know, we're in the pandemic, Newtown has a ton of restaurants, small businesses, they've been crushed. Mm. You know, I know, I mean, I'm going to be frank, government hasn't done shit for small businesses, really. The PPP was great the first time, but let's be realistic. After that, we've been high and dry. Right. Um, fortunately, my companies have all grown, which is sad to say, but, you know, my wife's restaurant shut down. I had no right. choice but to shut down. Yeah. Think of that red cent there, not a nickel, right? Yeah. All these other people. They're going to come through your courtroom sooner or later. You're going to have lease problems. How, how do you work this out? Because lawyers are saying now that, judges are going to not follow the law and start doing and you're seeing it around the country where judges are not following the law they start making decisions of their own doing what they want mm -hmm. i mean your honor how do you see this Does this just come straight it's law i feel bad but i'm going to follow it or do you try and use your judgment i'm just curious how you're because you're going to see these things walk down your door in the next sure. year Sure. you know and, and i unfortunately i think you're right you know it's it's when somebody gets behind the eight ball it is so hard to get in front of that eight ball now, the one thing I will say in the Newtown area, you know, Newtown, Washington's Crossing, you know, Wrightstown area, the, the, the commercial rental rates are so high. My jurisdictional limit's only $12,000. So I'm not going to see a lot of those <laughs> cases. <Woo! laughs> and, and you know that all of these restaurant owners, I know personally, you know, they're, they're, I, I've frequented their restaurants, you know, on, on, on many, many occasions. And, you know, it's it's you feel bad for everybody, you know, because, yeah, you know, the government did that first round, you know, people who got an EIDL, who got their PPP, blah, 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 all that stuff. But it's not enough, you know, and, you know, and, and again, you know, then on the other hand, you have people that are still to this day uh, afraid to go out, you know, in public because we're still in this pandemic. And, you know, the restaurant owners are at, some are at 25% capacity, some are at 50% capacity. Even at 50% capacity, it's, they're not making enough money. They're morphing their businesses now into pickup, delivery. They're doing the Uber Eats, the DoorDash. You know, what? my son works for Harvest in Newtown. Good and restaurant. It, it is a great restaurant. It's a good restaurant. Uh, it, it is. They they do a great job there. But you know, like like even my son, like I've I've seen. You know, he he tells me how much he makes every day when he goes in, and it's nowhere near what it was pre pandemic. So if if his salary is down, what's it, What what's the owner, the manager? Everybody's down. It's a trickle down effect. You know and. And, you know, but if it's a residential lease, you know, that that's different because, you know, there are different rules in, in place. If it's a monetary issue, there is a an eviction moratorium, which has actually just been extended again until March 31st, the end of March. Um, if it's for non-payment only, if it's a breach of contract, different story. But, um, you know, so so the government is trying, to, you know, to help, you know, with all the CDC guidelines. But it's it's tough. I mean, you're lots in a tough of position. Yeah, you're in a tough. I mean, that, that's that's a tough position because you still sure. you're a father. Sure. I mean, you have kids. Sure. You're a member of the community. Like that. Right. That's where I'm. Like, I don't know how you make those decisions. Right. God bless you, because I would not want to be holding the gavel, right? At that point, it's it's not the easiest job in the world. And no. but to your point, to your original question, you know, yeah, I I mean, I I one hand on the Bible and I took the oath to uphold that law but you also have to morph in common sense approach and sometimes you know you you do or at least i do i put my heart into it you know and and that i think is where more judges could do a better job from what i've seen out in the public you know it's you you have to uphold the law but there's a way to to massage you know certain cases well let's let's get let's get that's what they want it, 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 sure. that's what the pennsylvania constitution 
and the governmental preference for communities mm-hmm. was at the district justice level, the local level. You know that that courtroom on on State Street. Right. Um, it, it's all about uh, giving you know talented, dedicated, civic-minded people a chance to serve as judge, not necessarily with a lawyerly background, so that they bring that instinct, mm-hmm. you know, that sense of heart and judgment. That, that that's what was preferred and and you know that's kind of the uh the, the model and it's working I, I certainly i mean look i don't need to be involved in campaigns uh I, I i've got the opportunity to pick and choose and i mean not that i want to do this every year but i feel strongly about every mixed, six years mixed nature <laughs> yeah show up, and, governor. and his approach <laughs> so now here, here's a question you both are great leaders what do you think makes a great leader? I'm going to let each one of you answer that because you both lead. You led at the highest level to our governor of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. You lead every day in our local community, which, sure. you know, most, some would argue being a governor is actually easier than being a local judge. Because <laughs> you're in the, when you're, it, sure. it's, they're both, <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> they're both, they're both tough jobs. They're both tough yeah. jobs. Right. <laughs> but, Sure. What makes a great leader? Seriously, yeah, both of you. I, I, I'll tell you, my yeah. answer is very simple. To me, you just need to listen. Just listening to the people. Again, 20,000 docketed cases, 5,000 actual hearings, walking down State Street or, you know, just as an example, or going to a local restaurant. And, and yeah, you know, people, listen, not everybody knows me, but certain people know me, you know, and, and they will come up to my table, you know, I'm sitting there having dinner with my wife or friends, whatever, and they will ask me questions. They'll tell me what's on their mind, you know, what kind of hardship they're going through. So for me, just listen. And if you listen to somebody and then that'll, I feel I have the skill set to, to, you know, make sure that by listening, I can solve their problem. I can help them to a certain degree. So for me, it's just, it's caring, it's listening, and just doing the right thing. Again, I keep saying the word common sense. I believe wholeheartedly, and it just use the common sense approach. Some people don't have common sense. I agree. Sure. And sometimes, sometimes it's short supply. <laughs> I kind of look at it this way: it, it, it's you know, there, there's. It, in office holding, it, there's the technical realm, you know, the understanding of the issues, policy selection, and then there's, you know, the soft skill side. I mean, that's what Mick was talking about. And part of that is being out there and being approachable. You, you know, the proverbial ear to the ground thing. I think he does a great job of that. And so it gives him a sense of what's important to the community. You know, you asked about uh, illicit drug use and you know, somebody getting nailed with a joint. I mean, they, their whole life shouldn't be preempted because of that, that bad moment, that, that one choice. He hears that. And so he, he dispenses justice with that, that voice in mind of the community. That only comes when you're out and about and you're approachable, you're accessible. So in a soft skill sense, I think I, I always saw that important. And, and keep in mind, I'm someone that, that took over, you know, I. You know, 9-11 was all about uh, 3, 000, almost 3,000 people dying in the country, the second bloodiest day in the history of the Republic. Uh, one of those planes crashed in western Pennsylvania in Shanksville. I had to handle that, that deployment. And so days later, it was clear that Pennsylvanians felt vulnerable, anxious. You know, who, who sees plane, a plane fall out of the sky and 40 people die, brought down by terrorist uh, pilots. Well, uh, and I want to mention something about the perpetrator, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, KSM, who, who was to be tried this month, it's been postponed, hmm. uh, on the part of the, 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 the federal uh, military tribunal. Yet, uh, after that, it was my job to pick up on that. And so I wasn't behind a desk at the State House in Harrisburg. It, it, I was out and about because I, it was important for Pennsylvanians to see their governor, to offer their own thoughts, their own assessment, to be on the job in the field, not behind a desk. Right. And, and, and then I think on the technical sense, you know, we, we hired more troopers because most people believe, and this is where a district justice comes in, the number one job of government uh, is generally public service, but it's public safety, neighborhood safety. And that's where the DJ comes in. Number two, they want a job, economic growth, 
economic development, and we had to make sure that that was in place after 9-11, and Pennsylvania did quite well. So we, ha we had a downturn, but we came back strong. So I, I think, uh, you know, ha being up on in an intellectual sense, the, the technical and public policy challenges, but I think in this country where people want to see their office holders, it's being out and about and being accessible. Right. Now, okay, quick question. Now we get to the final question. What makes a bad leader? <clears throat> we see tons of them anymore. Let's be realistic. You know, and, and that's just it. You know, somebody, you know, to me who, who thinks they always have the right answer, mm -hmm. somebody who's not the exact opposite, somebody who's not listening, you know, you have to listen to your constituents, you know, because ultimately they're the ones that are going to be electing you. They're the ones that are basically either giving you a job or firing you. And if you're not listening to the people, which some, unfortunately, there are some politicians who they just do whatever their party or certain people within that party tell them to do, you know, to me, that's just not right. You know, do what's right for the people. It's literally that easy, in my opinion. What about you, Governor? Well, I, I throw this in, you know, and I kind of use a recent example. I, I look back to the spring and, and uh, you know, then President Trump dealing with the pandemic, which was beginning to explode. And, you know, the I think most Americans, you know, wanted the president. That's why they call you the president. You preside to step up and kind of show the way uh, and, and, you know, get PPE distributed to work to push for the vaccine solution and so on. And there was a point where uh, it seemed like politics over people where uh, the, 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 the president, the White House said, it's up to the governors now. And it created this non-synchronized mm. approach and platform. I think we lost some time there uh, as, as a country in terms of uh, treating the situation. So is it so much about the, the, the medical and physical care side when I say that? It, it's that, um, you know, the president missed one there, a chance to really show the way, you know, to be. He had talked about let's we're going to be on a war footing here to fight this. Uh, I don't think I think most Americans saw that as a weak footing and were surprised because he's you know, he always puts his chest out, so to speak. He, he always wants to give the raucous remark. And uh, so it, in my mind, at that point, uh, it seemed like, a, to me, a, a questionable decision. Do you believe a questionable should, outlook. Do you believe in term limits, Governor? I do. You do? I do. Uh, you know, not the California style, though. You know, the, you know, the thing where you, you've got someone who's a, a six-year-long state rep, really not deeply schooled in the issues, becomes the Speaker of the House. I mean, you know, you want experience and savvy. You know, the French call it savoir-faire. It's kind of a feel for how to resolve and how to lead. You're not going to have that with a couple of years as a as a as a, a state house member. So, in my mind, I mean, listen, we saw term limits. We saw term limits just a couple of weeks ago in November. <laughs> uh, like it or not, you know, the the people of of Amer of the United States of America said Donald Trump's done. Yeah, but, I mean, you got people that, you know, have been in the House and Congress now and Senate for 40-plus years. I mean, that's my age and your honor's yeah. age. I mean, that's a well, long Well, I kind of look at it this way. You know, Mike Fitzpatrick, who represented our area here, and Mick and I knew him well because we're all, we're, all, we're all Bucks County mm -hmm. boys, so to speak. Um, Mike was self-imposed. He, he set his term limit, and he, and, he, and he did stick to it. Unfortunately, we lost him a year ago yeah. uh, to cancer. Yet... Um, you know, to me, uh, I can live with it. I can live without it. Uh, if somehow we can have limitations and yet still uh, guarantee the placement of smart, thoughtful, tuned-in office holders uh, without tenure, then that's good. Okay. Your Honor, last question for you on the final roar here. Sure. I know you're 20, 30 years now almost. I think we're coming up on our 30 year reunion. Shit. Wow. <laughs> it is um, actually 30 years this wow. year. <laughs> okay. But that's besides the point. Your Honor, what do you want the people of Newtown, Bucks County, that know you, that don't know you, that are watching this? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are going to see this. I'm just curious to what you want them to know about you on the final roar and what you bring to the table. Because I think you've earned that right. So fire away. So basically, I, I don't want anyone to label me. You know, it, it's it's I am a a non-political person 
that unfortunately does have a label and I don't want the public to label me. Don't don't choose me. Don't think what you want to think about me because I'm under that certain label. I'm just Mick. Nothing has changed. Nothing. I put a black robe on for work every day. Some people call that the black robe disease. Not this guy. I don't have that. I'm a 47 plus year, almost 48 year member of the community. I'm a Bucks County native. I've lived in the Newtown area for 33, 34 years. Grew up in the lower end, Falls Township, Levittown, was a Pensbury guy until Council Rock. And I, I'm the same guy, just with a little bit more experience now in my life, uh, the grayer I get. And, you know, just just don't label me. Don't, don't pick me over party. Pick me because I am the right person. Pick me because of my civic duties, my my you know, educational background regarding being a judge. I mean, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania certified me. They said, I'm the right guy. Uh, you know, I've been doing this now for five years. I was elected six years ago. And, you know, everything I said that I was going to do, I, I'm doing. I, I'm actually doing more so. I sit on multiple county and state committees, you know, to make the judiciary better within the Commonwealth. And, uh, you know, I'm a hard worker. This is my full-time job. This is all I do. I don't have a side business. I don't have a law practice somewhere. Thank God. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 this is me. So, you know, again, my, my final roar is, you know, be you. Do, do what's right. Be an upstanding member of society, your community. Get involved. Don't label me. Pick me because I am the best person for the job. I honestly, truly believe that. And, you know, I just, I humbly ask, you know, people for their support, you know, so I can stay in the office that I truly do believe that I was created to do. You know, where can I donate to your campaign if I want to donate? If someone wants to donate out there, they're watching this, they like you. I think a lot of people do. I know a lot of people like you. So sure. where could they go? I don't think people want to see you leave office at this point in time. Well, so it, where would I go to donate? And and thank you for that. You know, I I can't directly ask somebody for a contribution. I, I can. Where can I? Where if I, I want to? Okay, Governor, fire sure. away. <laughs> Governor, fire away. Where can we, we go? We'll, we'll make sure. Uh, that you have that for sure. uh, future broadcasts. So we'll, right. we'll include it that will, in the link here. It will be published on my Facebook page, the Re Reelect Judge Petrucci Facebook page. Uh, I'm there is going to be a a mini small website, you know, that we're doing uh, with the donate button on there, you know, so it, it, it will happen. They just got to type in friends of Judge Petrucci, exactly. and, and that the guidance will be there. Okay, sure. we'll take care. I do have one last thing there for both of you. The police right now are under attack in our country. Yeah, right. Mm. I just being that you're a judge and you're a lieutenant, you're a retired governor. Everyone knows me knows I'm pro police, mm -hmm. and that's coming from a guy. That there's a bad shit when he's younger. <laughs> right? I mean, let's be realistic, okay? And that's so, not why I know Lance, by the way. <laughs> no, you you were next to me. No, no, he wasn't. But he wasn't. That was a joke. No, but you, no. Were, you were just faster. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, I mean, I want you to think about this. The police yeah. are under attack, all seriousness. Yeah. All right, is it rightfully so? Is it not rightfully so? I mean, I'll give you my opinion well, after I, you guys give me yours. I'm, I'm just curious. I'll take that one. I mean, I, you know... What frustrates me about some of the handicapping, some of the assessment of what's going on, whether, whether it was, you know, Minneapolis to uh, Louisville, and they were all difficult incidents uh, to, to observe, is that uh, many, many, unfairly so, people find it easy to malign 700,000 plus police officers with the, the perhaps bad decisions of one or two or three or four or five. Uh, paint, that painting with one brush mentality is just, I'm not, it's not right. It's not fair. Uh, you know, mo I mean, I'm pro cop too. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna back yeah. away here. Uh, what is, I mean, what are you gonna do if you got uh, an issue in your neighborhood? Um, you're gonna call a socialist? No, you're gonna, you're gonna hit 911, and you want a cop, a trained cop, to show up. And, and use their own judgment to get the job done. So uh, to me, that's the most alarming, frustrating aspect of th this, this uh, uh, movement, which I don't even like voicing it. Uh, it. It's, you know, the idea that you would have 
municipal government without a trained police department and you would you, you'd be comfortable defunding it, it, it it's it's foolish your honor sure and, and I will echo that as well you know I I do believe you know listen I watch the news too you know there are some bad police officers out there that have made some horrible decisions for one reason or another but I will tell you here in Bucks County because I do deal, it's more than just the Newtown, Washington Crossing, mm -hmm. Wrightstown area. You know, every nine weeks, actually starting tonight, I go on night duty and I'm responsible for the entire county. So I do deal with all the police departments in Bucks County. The police training center up in Doylestown, they have wonderful instructors. They train the Bucks County police officers and all law enforcement agencies for that matter. You know, uh, unbelievable. I've been to those classes. I have many of those same certifications as all the police officers in, or law enforcement officers in Bucks County do as well. So I know the training is there and the training constantly gets better and better. There are a few bad seeds locally here in Bucks County. Like I said, I know most of these officers. They do a wonderful job. And, you know, nothing is really like what you see on TV is really happening here locally. You know, um, and I'll give you just a real quick example. Just in the Council Rock School District, myself and Corporal Paul Deppie from the Newtown Township Police Department, also Council Rock graduate, uh, we founded Shop with a Cop which is a nationwide program. When I say founded it, we brought it to our district three years ago. This year alone, 2020, pandemic year, we, we partnered up with Middletown Township Police Department because they're, they're just a machine over there with Shop of the Cop. And we actually provided with the help of all local law enforcement agencies, 500 families in need in the Neshaminy and Council Rock School District, we were able to raise $112,000 and we made 500 families around Christmas time, the holiday season, that much better because they were in need. That's what cops are doing. But that's that's just one event. They do stuff like this constantly all the time. In the Council Rock School District, you know, you have police officers in the class. Well, maybe not today. <laughs> They're doing a lot of Zoom stuff now, but you have them in, including myself. I go into the classrooms on Zoom today, you know, and, and that's what the police are they're local community people as well they're great people you know i, I equate to this and there's bad digital agencies out there there's bad it there's bad in everything sure. but my son gregory wants to be a cop he's five years old all he does is run around my house in a police uniform <laughs> sure. four days a week a cop's a great job 99 percent of them are good you can't throw the bad app all the good apples out right. the bad apples listen do i believe in prison reform and some other yeah that's a whole nother debate but right. just to say a blanket like you said a blanket brush to say Cops are brutal, they're evil, they're bad, they're racist. It's That's not true. I mean, they do a lot more good than bad. Um, but listen, Your Honor, I wish you the best of luck. I hope you win. I know you're a good man. I've known you a long time. I see the good you do for the community. You deserve it. And, uh, Governor, thank you. thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate both of you guys for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for the invite. It was a pleasure, and great seeing you again. You too. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to follow me at Lance Bachman on Instagram and Twitter. Follow me on Facebook at Lance Bachman Digital. And every Thursday we drop a new podcast. Don't forget to listen to it. We're giving out great content. And remember this, this is the time to build your business right now. Let's effing go, everybody.